tick, tick. So that's like the pendulum, the beam of light bouncing between the mirrors. And you could use that, actually, to build a very accurate clock. Then Einstein imagined what that clock would look like if it were moving relative to us. So there's a little box there you can see. That's Jim's head camera. So Jim is seeing, of course, the clock in exactly the way that we pictured it when it was stationary relative to us. The light beam is bouncing up and down between the mirrors. But if you look, and we've got a sort of little video effect on there so you can see the trail, you can see that the beam of light that we see is tracing out a, a triangular pattern across the stage. You saw that from your perspective, watching Jim move, the light took a kind of triangular path as it bounced across the stage between the mirrors. Here is what Einstein's postulate, if you like, Einstein's suggestion that the speed of light is constant for all observers implies. See, this path is obviously longer than this path. So if we all agree on the speed of light, then it is obvious that it must take the light longer to tick for the moving clock than it does for the stationary clock. Moving clocks run slowly. This is true. Time really did pass at a different rate for Jim. It passed at a different rate for him than it did for you in the audience watching Jim move. Let's say that we catapulted Jim off at 99.94% the speed of light for five years, according to his watch. Then. We tell Jim to turn around and come back. It takes another five years to get back to the Earth. So for him, the journey would take 10 years. But for us, with our watches ticking faster than Jim's, 29 years would have passed. Jim would return in 2042, having aged only 10 years.